Hello from the Forstronics YouTube channel and welcome to part three of maximizing Arduino's ADC resolution and accuracy. And in part three, we're going to take a look at all the different types of errors that are going to affect an AC's ADC measurement, how to reduce some of them, and how to quantify them. So what affects measurement accuracy or ADC measurement accuracy? Well, there's three main areas that affect ADC measurement accuracy. They are uh, the internal ADC error. So this is the due to the non-ideal effects inside the chip, and there's not much we can do about these, but we can quantify them. There's the ADC reference error, and we talked a little bit about this in part three, but this can be substantial. It's sometimes not considered, but there's definitely something we can do to reduce this. And then there's external errors. These are going to be the smallest source of errors. They're very hard to quantify, but uh, we can we can take steps to make sure they're a non-factor in our measurement. And I should mention that, you know, in this tutorial, and especially in part three, I'm just focusing on what I'll call errors for static measurements. Uh, if you're measuring a sensor that has a fairly constant level and only slowly changes, uh, for ADCs that can do fast measurements, like measuring a varying signal, for instance, let's say a one megahertz signal, like, a, like an ADC that would be in an oscilloscope, uh, there's other types of errors uh, to be considered, and, and I'm not going to go into these. These are more the static errors, and and you know the Arduino and a, and a lot of the Arduino chips are, are more geared to, to just making static ADC measurements. Okay, let's first look at ADC internal error. So if you look at the data sheet for the 328P, and, and these are the same errors you'll find in, in any ADC, and that's offset error, gain error, differential nonlinearity error, and an integral nonlinearity error. I'm not going to go into details of what each is, but if you look at the, the figure, and I showed a figure similar to this in part one, but here we're looking on the x-axis, you can see ones and zeros. We're basically looking at a three-bit ADC, and the steps represent the different levels uh, where the measurements have to fall into. And so the dotted line represents the transfer function. So in this case, they're showing the transfer function as ideal, meaning this ADC is perfect. The only thing it's going to have is, is the errors due to limited resolution. In actuality, that transfer function will not be a straight line, or I should say will not be a straight line down the center of our ADC staircase, I'll call it. And so, for instance, offset would push that line either left or right, offset error. Gain error would move it up or down. And then the differential and integral nonlinearity errors would cause it to curve. So there's going to be those effects, and you're not going to have this perfect transfer function in your ADC's characteristics. Now there's the resolution accuracy limitations, and this is known as quantization error. And we talked about this in part one. But it's the whole idea is, you know, if you're measuring a scale from 0 to 5 volts or 0 to 3 volts or even 0 to 1 volt, you can have an infinite number of values in that scale. You could have 0.11 or you could have 0.1111. Infinite number of values. And the whole idea is no matter how many bits our ADC has, you can't map infinite values to a finite number. So we're never going to have perfect resolution. And in this example, and which is true for the 328, is we basically have plus or minus a half least significant bit. And I'll talk about what that means, but if I have a value that's here, it's going to map to this bit, bit value, 100. And if it's just here, it's going to map to this value. So the most error can have is a half, halfway between these two bits. So that's where that, that's coming from. And in most cases, you can imagine that you're actually going to get better than a half bit because let's say your reading's here or here. But worst case, you're always going to be a, a half bit off. Okay, so I, I talked really briefly about the errors. And what most data sheets will do is they'll quantify those errors, the individual ones. They'll give you the values for the individual, or they'll just quantify them into an absolute accuracy spec. So for the 328P, that's plus or minus two least significant bits. And that's what LSB stands for. So that means the quantization error or the resolution error, as well as the gain error and the differential nonlinearity error and all those other ones, they all add up to this, plus or minus two least significant bits. What does that mean, though? What is, what is least significant bits? 
Well, if we think about it, we have 10 bits of resolution. Well, which of those bits are the least significant or have the least impact on the measurement? Well, they're going to be the ones all the way to the right. Those are the least significant bits. So that's what it means when they say least significant bit. And another way to think of it is they're basically saying you have a 10-bit ADC. But when you get a measurement, don't necessarily trust those last two bits. And that's all it's really saying. What does that mean as far as an air tolerance? Uh, if we wanted to establish an air tolerance for our ADC, well, we would say the, the last two bits can have four different states. So we get four. And then we take our number of levels. We divide four by that number of levels. We get you know, 0 0.004. And if we turn that into a percentage, we can basically say that we'll have plus or minus 0.4% air. So that's, that's what our basically our tolerance is. And that plus or minus 0.4% would be the of the full scale value, not of the individual measured values. Another thing, you, another way to say that, or in, in engineering terms, I guess you would say, is your ADC has an ENOB or effective number of bits of eight bits. Okay, because our last two bits really aren't useful because of the internal errors of the ADC. I know you're probably upset now. You realize you thought you had a 10-bit ADC, and now you really just have a 8-bit ADC. Sorry. And then finally, I just want to point to this article. If you know, I, I went over some of the errors. I named them, but I didn't go into detail what they were, the error sources. If you really want a detailed description of that for both static errors as well as dynamic errors, uh, check out this, this link to this article. Okay, let's look at ADC reference error. And I talked about this in part one, but the whole idea is, you know, you can set your reference and that's what the ADC is going to use to as a known value to compare the measured value to give you some result. And uh, there's three choices. You can use the VCC or the power supply voltage level. Uh, you can use the internal 1.1 volt source as your reference, and you can also use an external reference. Well, the internal references, whether it's VCC or 1.1 volts, can be inaccurate. For the Arduino boards, at least the UNO, VCC tends to be pretty close to 5 volt, but the 1.1 can definitely be, be pretty far off. And as an example, if you go to the data sheet of the chip, they spec the 1.1 reference as plus or minus 0.1 volt. You know, let's see what that means. Let's say you measure your reference or your reference is really 1.16 and you think it's 1.1. That means you're going to do all your calculations in your software with 1.1, so that means every one of your outcomes is going to be 60 millivolts off. Think in the case of if we're using a temperature sensor. Temperature sensors usually represent a degree by every 10 millivolts. So you're going to be at least six degrees off. So that's that's a lot of air. The, the big solution is just to use an external reference. You know, if accuracy is critical for your design, use an external reference. You can buy for real cheap, for a dollar even less, you can buy voltage references. I have a model number here from Fairchild as an example. You know, Texas Instruments makes them, Maxim makes them, there's, there's a ton of them out there. Uh, another choice is you can use a Zener diode with a resistor, and here's a picture of the circuit. This is another way to go. I linked to this article. This article kind of goes over how to use this, but once again, why use a Zener diode and a resistor when you can just get a voltage reference for really low cost. The last one and the lowest one is the external sources of air. This is going to be the lowest, most likely for your measurements, but it's you can't really quantify it. And it's due basically to EMI, which is electromagnetic interference in your house with your wireless router, with your phone, with power supplies running and motors running in your dryer. Uh, that's putting EMI out into out into the air and and basically wires that you have running around or even traces on your circuit board act like an antenna and they can pick up that EMI. And noise, well, I'll talk about it as I go through these examples. So how do we prevent EMI and noise from getting on our, whether it's a circuit run or a wire that, that's connected to our ADC that's going to give us noisy readings? Well, one thing we do is we make our measurement wiring or our circuit runs as short as possible. So that's sort of a no-brainer. Do not run your measurement near power supply lines, high-speed digital lines, or high-frequency lines. So this has to do with a lot with the coupled noise. 
but the idea is if, if you have a power supply wire, don't wrap your ADC measurement wire with around your power supply wire. If you have a Bluetooth module on your design, don't put your measurement wires right next to where the antenna is. So just things like that. And then if you're using, let's say that your, your sensor is sort of far away, I don't know, two or three feet from your, you know, your actual ADC, you have to run wires over there. Don't just run the wires, you know, hanging out or straight. Uh, they can definitely pick up EMI that way. An easy way to avoid that is to use twisted pair. And all that does is you're just taking your two wires, your ground, your return, and the power wire, or I should say the high wire, wrapping them together. You can do it with a drill and a vise, or you can do it by hand if you like things to take long. And this basically creates characteristics in the wire or a reactive effect in the wire that basically will cancel out EMI if it tries to get onto the wire. Another step you can take if you're really concerned about it is you would use shielded wire, basically coaxial wire or something like that that's shielded from, from noise. Now, keep in mind these sources of errors are going to be small, and for the Arduino Uno that, that only has 12 bits of revol excuse me, 10 bits of resolution and only 8 bits that are effective, you're probably not going to notice this, but it's good practices to do, especially if you're working with ADCs that have much higher resolution. Okay, that's it for the Maximizing Arduino's ADC Resolution and Accuracy Part 3, and that's it for the whole series. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to email me. Feel free to use the comments section. Please, if anybody thinks I messed up or if they have something important to add, let me know uh, in the comments section. Uh, if you liked what you saw, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, and thank you for watching.